there were three petitions um, lodged with Parliament um, in 1891, 1892, and then we had the, the successful one in 1893, and they were all organised by the Women's Christian Temperance Union. So the temperance movement, um, um, it stood by what it believed. It didn't just be a political group, that they actually were practical. And so they bought properties, they owned hotels, called temperance hotels, and where people could stay, and it was of course particularly focused on um, families. The unrestricted sale of alcohol and the, the dire impact that it had on Māori families um, was significant, and Māori women were speaking out clearly about that. So basically violence and um, squandering, uh, desertion, all, all sorts of associated um, miserable outcomes of alcohol is, uh, were felt at the time. And so temperance was about a more moderate life that, that didn't have that extreme. They did lots of other things. They ran the sailor's rest. So once again, creating an environment, an alcohol-free environment, where our sailors could come ashore and instead of you know, living at the pub and spending all of their pay before they, they t went home on the home voyage, that they had somewhere safe to be. Look at this, what it says here. This, is, this, this pledge um, that was put before the Māori Parliament by the Māori Women's Committee is, was supported by Māori Women's Committees right throughout New Zealand. And these women used to stand at the hotel doors and sing and pray. And in, in the end, a lot of the hotels were had to close because the husbands didn't come anymore. The WCTU ran girls' homes. And it seems a bit silly today but to talk about it, but they like put in water fountains so that there was public drinking places. We didn't have boy races back then, but there were um, young boys on their horses. Uh, sort of riding rapidly through towns and they were you know, racing around being threatening. And so that came together with this fear that society was changing too quickly, that it was sort of out of control on the frontier and it needed to be brought under control. And the way to do that was to limit alcohol in particular and bring order. It says, <clears throat> observe the teachings of the elders, take care of the marae, homes and look after our people and visitors. So. Really, social cohesion right across the Māori community was such an important issue for them. If we could get women as the moral keepers of our society, um, give them a political voice, then that will perhaps hold some more political sway in being able to restrict um, the use of alcohol and the regulations around alcohol and prohibitions. And then the fifth rule was don't take alcohol onto the marae <clears throat> or give to intoxicated persons outside of the marae. Um, it certainly played um, a part in some of that debate that was going on around um, the ills of alcohol in our society and the breakdown of our traditional um, family morals. We went for the vote and it was not for equal rights, it was to get political rights. Uh, it has been changed over the years now to equal rights, but we were Christians and we believe that the Lord is the head. And a, w a woman's place is behind him, not in front.